All right, we're recording and I'm going to play the audio. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to episode two of the Medicine Chat Podcast. I am Adia Allen. I'm a teacher, way shower, and facilitator of full spectrum health. Since 2005, I have owned and operated Organic Soul Chef, which is a multi-modality holistic health practice. And through this practice, I share tools to assist you with aligning with your best, highest self so that may, you may live this life abundantly. I'm currently trained to become a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine, and I welcome you into our dialogue of exploring the many dimensions of medicine. This podcast is an opportunity for you to pause, breathe, and take in a nourishing chat with myself and my friends. We will be exploring, diving deep into the many aspects of what is medicine and we're gonna be sharing insights into health, healing, making sustainable lifestyle choices and embodying balance during challenging times. So today we are exploring how we use creativity as good medicine. I'm joined by two of the most creative souls I know, Benita Clemens and Melissa Perkins. And I know that when we get together, we co-create something magnificent and beautiful. So I'm going to have Benita Clemens to introduce herself. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, Benita Clemens here, hailing from Columbia, South Carolina. Yay for South Carolina. And um, since it is Capricorn season, I got to say shout out to all the Capricorns. <laughs> yes, I um and I and I'm enjoying telling people this about me. This is part of my introduction. I was born at 3 37 a.m., which I came here early and I still love give, getting up early, early in the morning so that I can take the time for self-care, which I am an exquisite self-care ambassador. I feel that African American women have to really, really be mindful of self-care. And so, as you said, in creative thought, I love to just create my own life. And this year, my life is about all about exquisite self-care. And so you ask me in 2022, I'll be something else, doing, doing creative, something creative. <laughs> I, create, I create a new introduction each year because that's how I like to create my life. It's perfect. I love it. Yes. Yes. We always are expanding and growing. And of course, since I met you, you have grown and blossomed and sown your seeds in many parts of the planet. And it's been beautiful to watch. So thanks for joining me. <laughs> All right, Miss Melissa Perkins, can you introduce yourself, please? I can. I am Melissa Perkins. I hail just north of Bonita. I'm in beautiful North Carolina, Raleigh. And, um, but my heart is still in DC Metro, which is where I met Medea and have lived off and on for six years. So that's my second home um, is DC Metro. And um, I am the CEO and founder of Blue Star Virtual Learning. I remember a few years ago being on a, what we nicknamed the goddess circle with these beautiful women before this was even the twinkle in its mother's eye. And um, two years later, we have a staff of people internationally who are serving kids around the world. And I'm just honored to be here. And I'm a big, firm believer in creation. So thanks for having me. Perfect. Yes, it's been just phenomenal to watch you grow and dream and manifest a dream. So I, I couldn't be in more perfect company to just talk about what it means to use creativity and how that is you know, how that's related to health. Um, this is the time, you know, January is the time when we start to think about resolutions. It's a new year, it's a fresh start. You know, many people are in that mindset of um, what has to be different because I know I want to be different. You know, I want to 
uh, go for that job I never went for, make more money, you know, join that gym or do that workout that I never seemed to got to last year. Um, and the process of creating oftentimes can feel overwhelming. So I would love for this conversation to be um, inspiration and almost like a, a how-to of creation so that people can walk away with steps on how to manifest what it is they want to create. Um, and I, before we jump in, I'll just give a plug on how using creativity is you know, related to health. Um, I think as human beings, we are always seeking to align with something that's bigger than ourselves, right? We want to be a part of a community. We want to be a part of a family. We want to be a part of a group. And oftentimes that takes creative imagination. That takes a thinking beyond what is now. And Honestly, that's just the nature of who we are as humans, to want to, to create. And that process, again, can feel a bit overwhelming. But I, what I would say is that it's just who you are. You know, it's, it's who you are as a human being to create. And as you can tap into your imagination, the thing that, you know, we were told not to, you know, focus on too much as a child, you know, be realist, you know, tapping into imagination and creativity absolutely just makes us feel alive as human beings. It makes us want to get up out of the bed in the morning. It gives us that pep in our step. You know, it, it puts a smile on the face, you know, when you start to think about what it is that you want to create. So it, it increases endorphins, you know, it, it keeps your, your brain cells, you know, connecting, forming new synapses. And so it, it, it is certainly a part of health. It's certainly a part of balancing to be able to tap into um, creation. Oftentimes, you know, women, we want to have a family and, and create, you know, it's, 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 it's innate, but creation is not just in the form of children. You know, our children can be the companies we create. It can be the relationships we tend to, it can be the delicious food <laughs> that we create in the kitchen. Um, so just put in the plug on, you know, giving people permission to let their creativity run wild because it is what keeps us flowing, fresh, young, vibrant, you know, and it keeps the, the elderly population, it keeps them excited about living. Just imagine if you would just get up and see the same thing over and over again, <laughs> the same people. So Bonita, I will start with you. How is it that you use creativity in your life and how is it in part of your self-care in medicine for you? It's everything. <laughs> um, you know, we live in our heads. Some of us just lives in our live in our heads and we can we can decide. I don't think we know we have this power. We can decide whether we're gonna be happy or sad. Um, at peace or at war, but it all, in my opinion, starts in the mind, which is where we create. We create our world. Um, I like to talk about when I was in Afghanistan for a year. I would use my imagination and my creativity to get me through when I knew that we had people that were intentionally trying to kill us. So that's when I went really, really deep into creating my thoughts, creating a fun time for me in this world. And so this is what I tell people because I was able to, to be creative and you know, use my mind, use my imagination. I, I say Afghanistan was my best year and worst year. It was the worst because of the physical location, but it was the best because I was, I allowed myself to be free in my mind and create and do some amazing things. And so it has really, being creative has literally saved my life. Um, I think in the Western world, we've been some kind of way taught, I don't know, not to be as creative. Now, I'm so glad to see that Melissa's on here because even though I have not attended a Blue Star 
class, I know without attending the class, the children, the people there are allowed to dream big, to use their imagination. And unfortunately, in some schools, we're not, again, taught to, we're taught to maybe shut that piece down. But for me, it has saved my life. Again, I, I've given you, you know, a real example of just being creative in my mind, determining, deciding how I want my life to be. And, you know, it has even tripped a lot of people out. Like, Benita, you have done some things that we don't know how you did. And I said, it's because of my creativity. I feel like if I can dream it and think of it, I really can make it happen. And Medea, you know, there have been some times when I continue to be amazed that when I create something, it'll actually happen. <laughs> it actually happens. And I continue, continue to this day to be amazed that I can create something in this mind and it really happens. I'm a true believer, but again, I'm still amazed that there is no limit to me creating something and I'm re reaping the benefits from it. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, so you bring up two things. Number one, being in an uh, environment like Afghanistan. Um, you said that it was the worst because of the physical environment. Oftentimes I think that that contrast is like the fuel that lights the spark of creation, right? Being in a a very challenging situation. Um, I think it just, the opposite rises in us naturally because we don't want to be uncomfortable. And that natural rising of the thought actually creates the thing, the solution, right? To the problem. So in, in a sense, creativity and creation is, is instantaneous because you said in the mind, you create, right? So creation is instantaneous However, the manifestation of it is a process. Um, and that's what I definitely want people to walk away with. Create from here to kingdom come. Write it all down. See it in your mind. Dream it. Dance it. And allow yourself to live into it. Feel worthy of the thing that's coming. That is oftentimes the opposite of what's in front of you. You know, so being in, in a war zone, being in an abusive relationship, having, you know, like the worst of things. That is the fuel that drives us to want better, you know, for ourselves. And I love, Benita, how you're still amazed because I, I oftentimes just laugh when you call me like, girl, I'm tripping. I can't believe it. And I just, I say in my mind, this is a manifestation maven. Like, what does she mean? She can't believe it. It's just beautiful to watch. And I think that's just the purity of who, who you are, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. I love it, love it. Um, Melissa, I would love for you to share um, how creativity has been medicine for you um, and how you use it in your everyday life. I think this is such a profound topic. I think it's... I think for people who are willing to sit with it and contemplate it and see the connectivity to health, they're going to be blessed. Specifically because in my own life, I think when I have hit a point of not wellness, and I'm specifically talking about emotional, like not just physical, but I'm just not well, I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled, whatever it is, um, the technique of pausing and listening and being in that for a moment. Because before I can create, you were talking at the top of the conversation about how some people feel overwhelmed about the whole prospect of creating. I think it's because they haven't listened to themselves. Like first take a moment to pause. Don't start getting out the vision board materials just yet. Like actually be in what you're in, that space of discontent, that space of fear, that space of frustration, sadness, depression, guilt, shame, whatever it is 
that is the stuff for the vision board. That is what it's made of. It's made of all of that. And then once you sit in that, once you're in that not wellness place, then ask the question, why? Why am I here? You know, don't look outside of yourself for, for blame. Like literally just stay within yourself. And that might sound a little off-putting to some people because we're conditioned in our culture to blame other people for our circumstances. You, because of this, I'm poor. Because of this, you know, your treatment of me, I'm this. But if we can just for a moment be within ourselves and just go, but why am I feeling this? Something beautiful happened with me. And I had this moment a few years ago where I was just really feeling like I was not at my fullest self, at my fullest potential, particularly professionally. And I kept seeing a pattern happening in my career as an educator. And it was this pattern of constant I start off really good, very optimistic, really excited, want to change the world, Mr. Hollis Opus. By the end of the year, it was kind of like, you know, uh, running from the Salem witch trial. Like I'm the witch that everybody's trying to hang, you know? Like, How do we go from there to this? And, you know, going through that experience over and over again, I finally had this moment of clarity where I stopped wondering what went wrong. And I just said, why? why and the answer that i got was really beautiful i'm here because i haven't made something different that's it i i'm i'm here right now because i've chosen to be here right now nobody held a gun to my head to get this job no one holds a gun to your head to marry a person or date a person everything that's happened in my life has come from, from a result of choice in some form of fashion. So when I made that realization, oh, I can make something different. That's when creation entered the room. That's when it entered my womb. And I began to go, wow, I can make a new outcome by making a different choice. So I would say choice is the pill. You know, the, the pill for healing in terms of using creation is the choice. What choice will I make? And if you're not feeling well, the clue is in asking, why am I not feeling well again? What choice did I make that caused that? What choice did I make? Not they, I make. And just do the reverse of that choice. <laughs> if all else fails, go the opposite direction. You know, so if you chose to buy something and you didn't have the means to buy it. And now you're sitting in a place of feeling like you don't have, maybe the opposite choice is to not spend your money so quickly the next time so that you're not in that situation again, you know? And it's those little calculations of decisions that led me ultimately to starting my own company. It wasn't overnight, but it was from really asking myself some simple questions using that pill and realizing that the pill is my choice. That is phenomenal. I love it. I love that because what you're speaking about is the freedom that results in creativity. And it, I mean, to, to arrive before arriving to creativity, it's having recognizing you have a choice, recognizing it's your responsibility to create, and it's recognizing that you're free to decide, you know? So that's the pre-work. Um, that's like the appetizer <laughs> to creating the entree is to actually realize that you have the power and you are free to be. And so, you know, making that assumption, well, if I'm free to be, then how would I like my life to be? Or how would I like my days to, to, to happen? How would I like this relationship to be? And even in the job that I hate, how can I make it pleasant for these next five hours, right? <laughs> um, so that, yeah, that is, that is absolutely beautiful. It, it, it really puts the power 
in our hands when we remember that we have the ability to decide. Um, yeah, that, I think that's it. No, <laughs> I mean, I think it really is it. Like before you are, like you said, sitting with the vision board, sitting with yourself, really allowing yourself to sit. And then there are some who they sit and they hear and see a lot. We have some people who are very sensitive um, in the sense they can tap in um, and it, it almost becomes like overdrive and they're overstimulated by their inner environment. And unfortunately with a lot of that population, they take the downers and the depressants to kind of cut off in terms of smoking or drinking or the things that allow them to check out because what's coming to them doesn't fit into what their normal life is. If you can understand what I'm saying, like people are- a pill, in. Popper, a pill popper question for that though. Mm -hmm. And that is for those who are highly sim sensitive or empathic, simply adding to the why question, why am I concerned with that? Mm -hmm. And add to that, what does that have to do with me? So, so look at why you're reacting to it because I'm not one who would look at a person who's highly sensitive or empathic and tell them, stop doing that because of the reason they're that way. Mm -hmm. But now bring it back to yourself. That's gonna be the key, I think, in this new era that we're living in is what does it have to do with me though? So if I see, if I'm crying because I saw someone get yelled at, you know, why did that bother me? Oh, well, because it's happened to me maybe. And now I brought it back to me. So now with that, I think I'm going to watch how I talk to people then. And I think we've got to get to a place where we're creators to stop being busybodies and start being busy with our bodies. You know the difference? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew it was clapping. I'll just, I'll step back in. You, you had a reaction to that. I mean, let, me, let me listen to your wisdom. <laughs> Yes, Benita, share. What do you want to say? <laughs> I'm just enjoying the, you know, I, I relate everything to food. This is yummy. Um, there is this, I, I think it's a saying or, or a, um, a uh, what do they call it? Some wisdom. And I might have it right, I might have it wrong. Necessity is the mother of creation. Is that how that goes? <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Necessity is the mother of of creation. Um, as Melissa was talking, you know, she was like, when she said the pill, my mind went to the Matrix, the red pill, the blue pill, which is one of my favorite um, movies of all time because it raised or changed my consciousness and it opened some things up for me. It, it made my mind be more expansive. And there is another saying, I know I'm gonna get this one wrong. Once the mind or the brain is exposed to something larger, it can't never go back to the original dimensions. We just can't. And, and that's what creativity, once, once, once you see it, once you peep it, once you taste it, it's, it's really hard to go back. And the freedom, mm. Now, I, Melissa, I'm going to be a little kid and I'm going to register for Blue Star Virtual Learning. I'm going to be in the, uh, the six-year-old class if you got six-year-old class. I want to be in that class because they are free. Kids are free in their mind. And when I want to really get creative and enjoy life, there are two places that I go. I go to the children. And then there was this physical place that I would go and it was the disabilities and special needs area where they were. Because every time I went in there, the greeting and the love that I received, because they're not in tune to all of the crazy that's going on in the world. That's where, you know, I, I would go and get the love again from the, from the children and, um, disability and special needs boards so I could it would open up something inside of me that love and it was like it's it was like a pill for me 
a happy pill, a pill that got me back to my joy and, and my center. Um, but I was clapping, Melissa, because everything you saying is just hitting the nail right on the head for me. You know, even though as Medea said earlier, I mean, I'm really a good manifester, but I continue to be amazed. But sitting and, you know, talking with powerful women, again, it, it adds another level, another layer to my creativity. And I just can't get enough of it. I don't want to get enough of it because I continue to grow and be creative and get some of that, that good medicine that, you know, it's not in that type of medicine. You know, it's, it's a pill, but it's not in a pill. Uh, I want to share a story about medicine and being creative. Um, I was in the hospital one time and that day, and it's so vivid in my mind because I recall hearing the doctor tell a friend of mine, they were outside of my hospital room and I, I, maybe they didn't think I could hear them, but he said, I'm sorry, but we've done all we can for her. There's nothing else we can do. And what I heard was I was going to die because they've done all they know to do. And I was feeling that was like one of the worst days of my life. But about six o'clock, my grandmother, who's now 43, came into the hospital room and all of the pain went away. I was in no more pain. I was in no more feeling bad. And I just burst out into tears. And she was like, baby, what's wrong? She's, she's driven two hours to see me. I said to her, you have taken the pain away. And that was really a big introduction to me about, you know, the creativity of, of even our, our existence. Because when she walked through that door, I'm telling you, the pain went away. I was no longer suffering. And the only thing I knew to do was cry because I felt good. That was in the 90s. And I still remember that like it was yesterday. Because that medicine, ooh, if I could bottle it up, <laughs> I would. But, but what I can do is tell people that, that we, our, our existence, our being can heal people. Our creativity can heal people because my grandmother just existing healed me from pain and suffering when the doctors said, we sorry, there's nothing else we can do for her. We done, we through. You hit, I, I mean, girl, that, that's a chill, that's a story that sends chills up my spine because I think that's why we're on this call with this doctor named Medea Allen. I've already told Medea she is my physician. She is my doctor. I'm just waiting, you know, for her to open her practice, you know, and get her little required credentials. But <clears throat> Medea has a way of um, meeting your soul, meeting you as soul, and unlocking, helping you to unlock the things within you that will heal you very much like your grandmother walking in the room. And I just think, you know, I, I'm so excited for you, sis. I'm so excited for you even having the knowing to even introduce the concept of creation as something medicinal. See, what's got to happen to me for a lot of us to not be fearful of COVID-19, COVID-25, COVID is that we can, we're just like, you can be as much COVID as you want, but I'm going to create a way to have such an abundant life that that is not something that can even infiltrate my system because it's powerful, that story, Benita, because it was a mindset of not being well. It's a mindset of not, of dying. You know, it's, this, it's the mindset that creates the next circumstances. And so then you look for that in your body. You know, our unconscious selves looks for the looks for the cancer cell to metastasize them because I must fulfill what you were expecting. <laughs> and but you instead, when you saw your grandmother walked in, I just think you saw love. And I don't think we realize that love and creativity are soul buddies. They work together. And that that creative process is a reminder that we are love. 
And then we all of a sudden see love in everything that's around us. And we let love heal us. Because sometimes you just get into these circumstances in life, whether it be a physical ailment or a mental ailment or financial ailment, whatever it is, and it just seems there's no solution that's working. You know, nothing's working. But we always have love. I, the minute, if I have, if I'm having a, a, a moment that is overwhelming or too much for me, if I just play, some, play a piece of music that I love, I'm good. If I just call my mama <laughs> and just cry, I'm good. You know, and so it's, it's tapping into the things that allow us to do that. It's having the creative intuition, the creative audacity to decide, I don't want this. <laughs> And I'm gonna make I'm gonna make another way to do something. I'm, I'm gonna pick up a phone and call a friend. That's creation. And we creation is not just painting a, a, a portrait, it's not just molding or sculpting a statue. It's not just making a really good dish. Creativity is choice. It's actually that moment that you make a decision to make another uh, do another thing for another outcome. That's creation. And when we start to teach that, not only to our children, but to ourselves, that's the game changer. This, this society we're in is just nothing more than a collective, um, a collection of, of multiple choices throughout the planet. So what if everybody starts making different choices? It changes. If you just make a different decision, it's something different. And, and, it, and it matriculates to our physical health eventually, of course. But more importantly, it's really something that just opens our hearts. You know, I had a, a in my contemplation, I had this, this thing come through that soul doesn't live in the mind. <laughs> as soul, I don't live in my mind because I, I come from a, a path where I, I see myself as soul, not something that has a soul, I am soul. So it's in my body, I don't reside in my mind, I reside in my heart. That, that's why the heart is such a big deal. <laughs> why we don't draw, <laughs> we want to show people that we care for them, we don't draw our brains <laughs> on, our, on our pants. We, we love Johnny in high school, we don't draw a brain on our pants, we draw a heart, you know, with arrows through it, right? Because that's basically saying, you have my soul. You have me, you know? So when I, when I show someone my heart or when I give someone my heart, I'm saying, you have me. And that's, that for me, creating from that space, creating from my heart, that's going to be a game changer for me. Wow. I'm over here laughing. I'm crying. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting the full treatment from this conversation. I, I love it. Oh, wow. Yeah, Benita, that story with your grandmother, I just, it took me all the way there, you know, like it just took deep took me deep into the deep chamber of, of my heart. You know, the heart, the little tiny heart opened up and there was a little, a smaller heart in there. <laughs> you know, you just opened up all the heart chambers for me. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. And Melissa, thank you. I'm honored to be your doctor. <laughs> and I'm, I'm honored to hear every bit of wisdom that comes from both of you. And I just pray that, oh, uh, all who listens just receive the goodness that's coming because it is, it's from a place of just purity and goodness. And that's where we want to create from love um, and freedom and choice and just high vibe, you know? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm becoming speechless, which I can't be because this is the podcast. But uh, <laughs> what I'll do is just start to wrap up. Um, I would love for people to be able to find you both. Um, so if you want to just share how people can um, find you on the internet or social media, feel free to share that before um, I play the outro music. So, Benita, you want to share how people can find you? Yeah, regular Facebook. I'm going to step my game up this year. Though. I'm going to be a little bit more visible on Instagram, but on Instagram, I'm Benita Clemens. On Facebook, Benita Clemens. I'm in a meditative pose with white on, but I'm going to change that picture to when I was about two or three years old, 
because I was a little girl who was in deep thought contemplation. And I said, yeah, I got to change it to that because I still am that person. <laughs> but Benita Clemens is, is awesome. a way to, to um, find me. And I want to say this, as you ladies were talking, if you saw me, I was writing because I'm always taking notes. But the word freedom, I heard that a few times. And that's my word for 2021, freedom. Even though I know I'm free, I'm just going to take it to a new, another level, not a new level, another level and just create my little butt off this year. I'm going to take it to another level. But find me again on Facebook and Instagram at Benita Clemens and enjoy this creative ride that I'm getting ready to put myself on the mothership. <laughs> I can't wait to just witness, just bear witness. <laughs> Melissa, would you like to share how people can find you? Or um, I am always on my website. <laughs> I call it the Matrix. Speaking of the movie, I call it the Matrix. <laughs> so it is um, www.bluestar v for virtual l for learning dot com. So bluestarvl.com. That's my website. Um, you can reach me directly and call me on my work phone nine eight four two hundred zero zero six nine. Goes right to my mobile. I'm also on Facebook under Melissa Perkins, and you can also find me through my Facebook group, The Conscious Educator, or even type in Blue Star Virtual Learning. Either of those ways, you can find me on Facebook. I'm on the new platform, Clubhouse, so you can look for me there on Melissa Perkins, and I'm also mm -hmm. on Instagram, um, Blue Star VL is how you can find me there, and Blue Star Founder on Twitter. Wonderful. So yes, please plug into all their goodness to be inspired and be fed. And, you know, as Benita shared, just being in the presence of her grandmother, you know, she felt that love. So being in the presence of these divine creative souls, something good will come of it. So reach out to them. And I just will wrap up by, again, giving all who's listening the permission to tap in. You are a creative soul. You are creativity. When we give our permission, give ourselves a permission to create and be creative, we're tapping into that divine spark of who we are. And that is just our right. And it will always be. So enjoy 2021 from a place of freedom, creativity, and choice and creating something better than you've ever been. <laughs> and of course, you can find me at organicsochef.com and Organic Soul Chef on all uh, social media platforms, except for Tumblr. I don't think I mess with Tumblr. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. And I will play us on out.